Okay, guys, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the nice guy syndrome a little, uh, because it's it's super important that you guys understand this going forward. How many of you guys think you're a nice guy? Okay, bulk of the room. <laughs> and um, how many of you read No More, Mr. Nice Guy? Good. That book had a huge effect on you. Raise your hand. Did anybody get real emotional when they read it? Okay, so definitely. Okay, so uh, that's it. There's only small, I, I would think there'd be a lot. I got super emotional when I read it. It got really reactive the first time. Uh, it triggered so much inside me. And I know you guys in the back because I, I know your stories. So. so what is a nice guy? What are some of the traits of a nice guy? Let's talk about them. And uh, I want you guys to start yelling some stuff out for me. And we're going to start playing with this. Compliant. Okay. Uh, compliant. I want to cover some specific things though. And so I want to, I want to kind of, I want to move each other. Give, give me one. Go for it. Uh, Pleasing, yeah. Okay. For validation purposes. Yeah, he's trying to get validation from others. He doesn't have a sense of validation inside, so he has to get him from others. Compliant in the sense that, well, not always. So that one kind of, I hesitated on. He can be compliant, but sometimes nice guys, when they get overloaded, they, they shut off and they become completely uncompliant. They disappear, they hibernate, they hide, they won't return your calls. That's the other side of it. So uh, what's another one? Covert contract. Covert contract. Yeah. I'm, I'll do this for you, but then you owe me. And then I'm going to get resentful. I'm going to take a girl out to a dinner and I'm going to buy her, I buy her flowers. I take her to dinner and the whole time, if she's not responding, I'm getting mad at her because look at all the stuff I did for you. And uh, you ladies ever have that experience? Yeah. It sucks, doesn't it? And you, you probably feel it now coming on right away. As soon as you start to go on the date, you're like, oh shit, it's one of those guys. And uh, is that true? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What else we got? Dishonest. Dishonest? Yeah. The Alliance guys will tell you what you want to hear, not the truth, because they don't want to cause pain. And if the truth requires me stepping into tension and it's going to cause any potential conflict, I have to be dishonest. Super reactive and uh, passive-aggressive. The reactive, yes, and they can be very passive-aggressive sometimes because that's how they get their power out. The victim puke. Victim puke? Oh, yeah. The victim puke. They throw up all their, vic try to get, get you to feel sorry for them, get you to take care of them. That hold it in to somebody they can't hold it anymore. Right, it's the same with anger. They do the same thing with anger. They hold it in, hold it in, hold it in once a year, bam, a big, big, big bout of anger comes out. Then they get guilty and try to push it all back in again. And uh, so yeah, you guys are good. You guys know your stuff. I'm, Im I'm impressed. So some of the things I wanna write up here is that are really important, that nice guys tend to be very reactive, okay? So just kind of feel this for a minute. There's a sense of reactivity in nice guys, right? Reactive being, what, is, what do I mean by reactive? I know you know. I want, I want somebody, somebody that's new. Does it mean they don't make choices? They just, I don't know. They, I'm gonna, I'm gonna distill, I always distill everything down to its essence, right? So we could talk about concepts of reactive, but I wanna get it really clear. Reactive is, you, you know the answer, right? It can be, you can manipulate as a response to being reactive. You can start being manipulative to get what you want. Um, so yes, but reactive is this idea that um, there's tension in the environment. If I'm reactive to that tension, what am I doing? It might be something simple as like a nervous tick. Like I'm unconsciously can't stop tapping my foot. I'm like a little, little jitter or a shake because I'm having a reactive moment. What am I doing when I'm doing that? I'm escaping, I'm releasing tension because nice guys are avoiding tension. They don't like it, it's dangerous to them. Too much tension in the environment makes them nervous. So they need to get rid of a lot of the tension, okay? But life is filled with tension. You can't get rid of it. It's all fucking day long, right? You walk out the door, there's tension everywhere. Walk through the casino, there's stuff going on everywhere that can cause tension. So nice guys though are taught that tension is bad. Life that teaches you tension is bad. Get all the tension out of your life. Get all the stress out of your life. This is a huge mistake for men to teach them this all the time. Because what it does, it makes very passive men that are, that are running around trying to get all the tension out of their life. Now what happens is when the tension builds up too much, you start to feel all that stress in your body, right? And you start to worry, oh my God, this is bad, this is bad. So the nice guy gets reactive to the tension to try to get rid of it as fast as possible. So in other words, if I drop this and get embarrassed, because let's say it's a glass and it shatters all, and I get embarrassed, I want to clean that up, that glass, up as fast as possible or just run off and leave it because I can't handle all the tension of everybody looking at me and laughing, right? 
And so there's all this nervous energy and I'm rushing. What does a confident person do when they feel all that tension? They drop the glass, it breaks. Confident person's, okay, people are looking at me, they're laughing, I'll have fun with it. I'm not gonna run from it and I'm not gonna rush through it. I'm also not gonna try to use it to get more attention. I'm just gonna be like, this is what it is. You know, it's not a big deal. I'll walk through the tension confidently. A guy who's really good with tension is he creates tension as he walks in, he's just gonna relax into the tension. It's not gonna bother him. He's like, yeah, there's tension here. It's cool, let's play with it. A guy, a nice guy, I do that. The nice guy's gonna be like, oh shit, oh shit, what do I do with the tension? How do I get rid of it? Because their alarms are going off because tension is bad for them. They need to deal with it fast, okay? Is this connecting to everybody? Raise your hand if you're getting it. Okay, good. Go ahead, Brian. Um, I know the last time we spoke, uh, I told you that I get very aggressive sometimes with people or mm -hmm. I make people That's a reactive response. Yeah. So sometimes with the tension, like, like I, I guess I don't ease into the tension. Yep. Just like kind of like forcing myself into yeah. the tension. Yeah. And I create more tension. Yep. You compound it into a, a reactive, more reactive tension. And people get super aggressive. Yeah, because you just compound it all over the place. Yeah, you're not, you're not handling it. it. It all has to be handled in time. That's what, being proactive, now I can feel. Is it this too much, this too little? Is this a good amount? Okay, I'm pushing it, but this guy's boundaries I'm about to hit, so I'm just gonna kind of play with it right here, right? So I know what those limits are. But if I'm reactive, I'm just gonna, I'm either gonna plow or run away because I'm trying to deal with, I, I'm not responsive to the other person, I just wanna get rid of the tension or get through it. Like, if you get this idea that tension is bad, let's take weightlifting. I wanna build some muscles, but tension is, uh, but I don't like it. You know, I don't like the whole working out, it's like tiring, it's fatiguing. So I go in there and I lift weights as fast as humanly possible and then rush out the gym, right? What are the chances you're gonna get a lot of growth out of that? You're not conscious, you're not present with the moment, right? Does that make sense so far? And so that, that's what he's doing when what he's talking about. He's trying to push through the moment and just get it done. And who's, who's had a boss like that or somebody they've had to work with that does that? They kind of always just pushing, 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 pushing. You spend a lot of time, not a lot of you? you nobody knows somebody like that? No, okay, guess. yeah, that's how you work. It's tiring, isn't it? How do you feel at the end of the day? Washed. Washed out. And when you fall asleep, it's not like a good, I had got a lot done today. Yeah, but then you're just exhausted and you still wake up heavy, don't you? So on the other side of that, if you push into the tension and you're present, like let's say you have a day where you're not rushing, but you're with the tension, you're fluid. You ever have a day like that where everything seems to flow? I actually just started, I heard some of your videos on that, and I've gotten, starting to practice that to slow down. Yeah, now you're getting into vibrational alignment with that day. What happens is at the end of the day when you go to sleep, it's a very restful sleep much different. It feels like a productive day. If it, that's because you're becoming more proactive with tension. Now, when you're pushing like that and you're pushing really hard, how many mistakes do you make a day? In my business, it could be fatal. Yeah. But are there mistakes? Let, let's put it this way. Yeah. What I find is when people do that, they're often having to back up and fix little problems all along the way because they're, they're pushing so much, they're usually not doing things always right the first time. I've mispicked an order. Mm-hmm. And if you add up all those little 1% throughout your day, how much of your day gets wasted on fixing problems you created by rushing? Yeah, that's one of the secrets of successful people. If you hang around with my buddy Rob, who makes over 100K a month, and you watch the way he works, he doesn't rush ever. And he has a lot of free time. A lot of free time, very successful man. His life is very easy, it's very fluid. He doesn't rush. And uh, I find unsuccessful people don't have a lot of free time. I just wanted to say thanks for mentioning sleep. As soon as you mentioned sleep, my ears were really perk up. Uh -huh. Because I have trouble with that sometimes. Yeah, this probably has a lot to do with the reactivity and your mind probably is still racing when you go to sleep. Because the mind, and when you've been pushing like that all day, the mind has all these things that are undone. At the end of the day, when you lie down, because all these little worries and problems and things that are undone, your mind won't shut off. It's still mulling them over in the back of your mind and, and spinning in circles, okay? How does this relate to women, everything we're talking about? 
Well, this all applies to meeting women, dating women, how women see you, your purpose, your success as a man. The way it doesn't, you don't even have to be super successful, but your relationship to tension is essential for them in being attractive. Thanks.